Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to be planting a whole bunch of strawberries, uh, mostly for Benjamin because he gets to them way before I ever have a chance of getting a ripe strawberry, which is totally fine. Whatever way I can pique his interest in gardening and keep his, like hold his interest, I will do that. And that's one of the main reasons that I'm planting them. I'm also planting a few flowers for myself and they're all gonna be going up in our new cut flower garden area on the new property. Um, but as you know, strawberries are a perennial crop. So they're sending that it's gonna come back every year and I wanted to be careful since this space is temporary not to plant anything in the ground that I would either have to like abandon and till in or dig up and move because that's a heck of a lot of work. So I went and picked up three stock tanks. They're two by two by four. In fact, this is kind of funny. I thought for sure I'd be able to fit three in the back of the truck. Nope. I had to smash this one in here and it was really hard with Benjamin's uh, seat, his baby seat in there. Anyway, I've got three of those to move out to the cut flower garden area. We're gonna kind of address drainage and, and also what to fill the bottom part of the uh, tank with since they are fairly tall um, and we don't need to use 100% soil in them. I got some bark nuggets that we're gonna be using. Anyway, let me show you the plants here and then Erin's gonna come out and help me because um, we have to determine whether or not we need to add more drainage holes to the bottom. There is a like a water drain hole that's like this big I'll show you on the side. That might be plenty, I don't know. So here are the flowers. Oh, aren't they so pretty? We're gonna do a few play in the blue salvia in the center, kind of surrounded by these beautiful peachy colored dahlias. And then our buried treasure red strawberries, which several of them already have berries starting. And I love the look of these stock tanks. I see people garden in them all the time. It has very like kind of rustic, kind of charming vibe to it, which goes perfect up in our new area. Plus we'll be able to get underneath these with forks with our tractor and we can pick them up and move them to the new space and we can still utilize them. Um, and yeah, cause I was thinking what kind of raised bed situation can I put out here that's easy to move? Well, it has to have a bottom for it to be easy to move. So these are kind of the perfect solution, I think. Which gets me thinking, I wonder if I should put some bricks underneath them to raise them up slightly off the ground. I don't know, I need to go gather drip supplies too. So first part of this project is just gonna be gathering up supplies and getting them out there. Hey, Ready for me? <laughs> almost. Hey, can you bring out the key to the truck? Sure, uh, because, which truck? Uh, the gray one. one, yeah, because if you drive it right over by the garden, we can just unload all that stuff and okay. then we can go back to get the raised bed mix with the truck. Okay, cool, thanks. The weather has been glorious too. You might notice I'm in a sweatshirt and it's June the 8th, which is nuts. Uh, our high yesterday was 58 degrees and it got down to about 40, was it 41 last night? I don't know, it's lovely. I'm not gonna complain at all. Turn the water on out here while I'm at it. Got all of our vine crops just planted and I left a six foot row between the actual aisle and where all the vine crops are and where the tomatoes are because the vine crops that end up toward the outer outer edge will end up crawling all the way over here. So I'm left with kind of this space, you back up. I'm left with this space on the end of the tomato rows and that's where I was thinking of putting the tubs, but I've got to kind of get them out here and size them up. Here he comes. They look so big when they're in the truck, but I don't think they'll look as big once we get them down out of the truck. See that little plug on the side? That's the drain to drain this whole stock tank out. And it sits pretty close to the bottom, like pretty darn close. Do you think that's enough space? Oh, yeah. I think that's totally fine. Especially given the fact that we're putting in bark nuggets at the bottom. Bark nuggets? That'll... <laughs> that's just a funny word. <laughs> <laughs> that will uh, help facilitate drainage too. How come I can't get this out? That might be all the farther it goes. Oh, it needs to come all the way out for my purposes. Oh yeah, that's like an over an inch diameter hole. That will get plugged. I think it'll be totally fine. You think so? Oh yeah. Okay, you heard it. Aaron thinks it's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty of these is, I don't know that what the Benjamin, beauty is. It's like a perfect height for I him. I know, it really is. Like right here is just so perfect for him. He's gonna love it. He'll yeah. wanna come out here and check on them every day. So we're gonna get all of these placed then we'll check it out. Cool. The brand is Bayland Country. I got them at Home Depot for like 80 bucks. So as raised beds go, I think that's pretty cheap. Pretty cheap project in the end. Compared to what it could be, I should say. Whoa. 
This is when it would be handy to have fingernails. Oh, for crying out loud. Good enough. Good enough. God. I bet you can't manhandle that other one out of the back of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's bark nuggets in there. <laughs> oh, don't say bark nuggets. Well, that's what it says. It's Western bark nuggets. Looking good throwing those nuggets around. I'm known for <laughs> throwing the nuggets. Being able to throw around some nuggets. <laughs> They're pretty light, huh? So heavy. What, what do you think? Like 80 pounds per bag? Uh, yeah, it's 80 pounds dry. Oh. Dry weight. Yeah. Like it's nothing. This one's dented. Should have got a discount. Oh. Fixed. Kind of makes me happy to be just using the one drain hole that has a proper plug because then if we decide to not use them as planters we could use them as stock tanks if we ever had animals or we could make them into little ponds Can like little water gardens or something you want some donkeys no how about some sheep no how about a horse two oh, horses God. we just need to buy more land i don't think i'll be ready for that for a long time i think we are going to be um battling puncture vines on this property you think so oh my word you can see them everywhere like just everywhere coming up you till and they will come how'd you do this well i was kind of in a spaz in front of the home depot trying to go real fast to get out of people's way so i think it was just kind of an adrenaline sort of thing you just push it in here <sighs> All right, so we've got them kind of placed here. We need to go get a tool to kind of rough up the soil beneath them so we can level them up. And then also get some drip supplies because we can tap in to drip right here and just run a quarter inch tube through the hole up to the top. So we need drip supplies, you're saying? Uh, drip supplies and the raised bed mix okay. to fill in the rest of the way. So I think we should take the truck. <laughs> just let it go for a while just let it go no. okay <laughs> that's going out there there <gasps> that sprayed all over my hair so i got the drip system started on all of them and to do that i just used the hole punch tool to punch a hole in this half inch black poly, then use a straight quarter inch coupler, and then quarter inch just solid black tubing, and then we'll hook up the drip, actual drip tubing, once we have them all planted up. <gasps> oh! Oh, shoot! Oh, no! There goes that shirt. I can sew it. <laughs> Next, we're gonna fill the bottom with bark chunks, nuggets. So that actually ended up being perfect. I could only fit 12 bags of the bark in the truck. Uh, so it was four bags per stock tank and that ended up filling it about halfway. And then we're gonna be filling the rest of it up with the raised bed mix right here. And strawberries are shallow rooted plants and so are the annuals that I'm planting. I mean, they do appreciate a little bit more of a soil reservoir than the strawberries. So I think kind of going halfway here was a really good kind of way to go and the cost of four bags of the bark was about the same like equivalent of the cost of one two cubic foot bag of soil which would have taken at least four to get this full so it really is a cost saver and when you don't need a soil reservoir that deep i think it's awesome now if you were planting like something that you would want to live for a long time that had that got really big like 
I don't know, fruit trees. Yeah. Like if you're wanting to plant a dwarf fruit tree or something like that, or ornamentals that get bigger and keep them in containers, I would recommend you filling the reservoir all the way with soil, and I've talked about that before, um, because they will utilize all the soil. They need the room for root growth, but in this case, we don't need that. So this is just perfect. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head what other options are. Like people use pop bottles or empty water jugs or things like that. Mm -hmm. What else? Rocks. Rocks? I've heard of people using big rocks. Well, kind of one of the benefits of, of using bark is that it's so lightweight. So these will be a lot easier to move around as opposed to if we filled them with rocks. Yeah. You wouldn't want to fill a temporary container with rocks. No. That's for sure. <laughs> no. So each of the tanks took about eight cubic feet of raised bed mix to fill them up. And you could absolutely use like an organic potting soil, uh, whatever is easiest for you to find. I think they're looking really good so far, even without plants. I do need to take the tags off of the last two, but I'll do that later. So before I set up the drip system on top of the soil, I'm gonna add in my biotone fertilizer first. Drip is essentially done. I need to go grab some more landscape staples. In fact, Aaron just went to grab some um, so I can finish staking it down. But that's where the water comes up. I just put a straight coupler in and then there are 17 drip emitters in here, which may need to be adjusted, but I'd rather start with too many than too few. Uh, anyway, and then the very end has got a goof plug. Loop-de-loo. Loop-de-loo. Yeah. Nice. So all I really have left to do is to stake these down in plants. So I think, I, I think I'm good. My chores are done. Your chores are done. Thank you for your help, unless you want to plant. Uh, I'm good. Okay. Have fun. I will. Also, you owe me a new shirt. I will buy you a new shirt. Will you? For sure, yeah. turned out really cute. I mean, I do think the rest of the area, once all the vine crops start to grow and I've actually got some other things planted like on the obelisks out there and the tomatoes put on some size, I think it really, the whole area is gonna be pretty charming. But if I just put my blinders on right now and just look right at this, this space makes me really happy. And these were so easy to put out here. I think it was a really good solution for right now. So I used 10 of the Buried Treasure Red Strawberries, although I do think I had one of the Buried Treasure Pink mixed in, which makes me excited. I love that these strawberries are both ornamental and practical at the same time, producing food. Like you can see this one right here, getting closer. So they produce both food and they have beautiful kind of double flowers there to enjoy as well. And I think it's a really fun, bright mix of color. So two plain the blue salvia and then six of the dahlias. I initially had five in the first couple and then I decided to add a sixth so that they kind of did a ring around the plain the blues in a really even way. And I don't know what is up with the stickers, but that one came off really easy. This one came off like not great. And that one I'm having a hard time even getting started. So that's gonna be a project for a different day because I do not feel like monkeying with that sticker right now. So the last thing I wanna check is the water. I'm gonna turn on the water system and we'll see if the drip works. There it is. Oh, that is a good sight. This water system out here has been really interesting. This is the very first time that I've had to like stand out here or only have the water running while I'm out here working because it's the first time that the black poly has ever wanted to pull away from the couplers. Uh, and so I've been having to put different clamps on them. Let me show you. Yeah, you can see where this one blew the other day and just blew water everywhere. And so I have to come in 
and reinforce all of them with this as they blow. <laughs> so right now I have been running this system. I ran it, I think three times now and haven't had any more issues. So I don't know, I just can't leave it unattended because I don't want to have any of this action going. I don't want to waste water. I also don't want to water the weeds. Look at those lined up there all cute. I just stepped off this area too because I thought, well, what if I lined the whole walkway right here to the end of this section with these tubs? It would take seven more of those, <laughs> which is quite a lot. Maybe we'll add them gradually. And that is gonna be it for today's project. I'm super happy to have these out here. What a fun addition. Something I wasn't really planning on. The problem was is that I ordered strawberries thinking that we would have our more permanent space set up. And I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. I had no idea what went into making a raw space usable. And I even think that I didn't do this space properly. I didn't because we didn't address the weeds. We didn't do any of that sort of thing or amend the soil before I started planting. So it'll be interesting, but I think we're going to end up gardening in this temporary space for this year and next year while we slowly work on really doing a good job of prepping the permanent area. So I needed to find a way to use the strawberries. Aaron's coming out here at the tractor. I text him because I've got a pile of grass I need to spread out. And so he's gonna go put the bucket on the tractor so I can do that. And what in the world, Russell, what are you doing? Hey, hey, you get out of here. This is not a Russell planter. This is a Benjamin planter, my word. I think Aaron likes it when I find little projects that need to be done with the tractor. Just my opinion. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.